How's it going everybody? So a common feature that a lot of people probably want out of an editor is a way to format their code. One example of this would be, say for example, if you use Java, C, C++, you often want the indentation to maybe match your curly braces, and maybe a few times you forgot to indent the right amount or something like that. You often want an internal tool or some sort of way to format it for you. Or say for example, you're a Go programmer and you want to be able to use GoFMT. Well, in this video, I'm going to be covering how you guys can use these external tools, integrate them with Vim, and even use some of Vim's internal features in order to format. If you guys are interested in learning more about Vim, how you can optimize your workflow, and maybe learn a bit more about Vim's integrated features, then make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and hit the bell icon so you guys can be notified in my next video so you guys can learn more. Now, before we get into it, I just wanted to cover some alternatives that exist. There are tools like ALE, NeoFormat, called AutoFormat. There's a bunch of different plugins that are meant for doing exactly this, but in a lot of cases, they can be kind of overkill if you don't really need to be using it. Like every time you save, maybe you just want to format a specific uh, like section of text or something like that. This is where this would come and shine in. Now, if all you're looking to do is just handle indentation, then you probably just want to use the equals key in Vim. And just to give you a really quick example, let's just show you how you guys can use it. All right, so here I have a really simple C file where I have a few sections that are not indented properly. And so really quickly, just to use it, I would hit equals and then capital G, and that will re-indent the whole file. Now, I could just do equals IP to re-indent that little paragraph. You can do a bunch of stuff, but this will basically apply the exact same way as you'd expect. Now, the equal key actually uses a bunch of different options. So, for example, when you first use it, it will check and see if there is an equals prog, which is basically an external program which will handle the indentation for you. This is probably not what you're looking for because there's actually a separate feature that I'll talk about later on that is a bit more useful for something like this. After it checks and sees if equal prog is set, fall back to one of the internal formatting functions that it has built in. And in fact, Vim comes with a bunch of file format specific uh, indentation features and functions that you guys can use. There are actual functions that you can use with indent expr, and you guys can basically use that to determine the exact Vim function and change how it will indent your code. So something like this could be really handy if, say for example, you wanted to do some custom formatting that no other program can use. Now covering indentation in Vim is probably something that could take up an entire video because it can get a bit confusing, especially if you're not used to how Vim does its indentation. So I'm going to save that for a separate video. If you guys want to learn more about it, go to the help page. Now as a Vim user, chances are you're a fashion icon and you've probably worked with GQ before. Oops, wrong GQ. What I meant was the GQ key binding that you get when you use Vim. Now the reason that you'd use GQ instead of the equals key is the fact that equals is meant for just doing the indentation, whereas GQ is meant for full text formatting. And this can come in pretty handy for some of the more complex formatting that you may want to apply. Now, just to give you a really quick example, if I just hit equals and then G, it would basically only affect the indentation for this. And since this is just a plain text file, there isn't any indentation that's needed. So it will just strip all the indentation. Now, this is probably not what we wanted because we actually would have wanted something maybe like putting it all together, turning it into paragraphs. That'd probably be useful for say, if you were working with a markdown file. Now, instead what we do is we do GQ IP and that basically will format all of it. And instead of just affecting the indentation, it affects all of the text and it will apply uh, whatever formatting we use, and I'll talk about that in just a sec. Now, the way that you can change what GQ actually uses for formatting like this, it first off will check and see if there's a format expression, which is like I said before, similar with an indent expression, it's a Vim function for formatting your text. Now, if that's not set, it will use format prog, which is what we're looking for in this video. This is how we can integrate different programs into it. Now, finally, after that, it will fall back to just using the text width features as well as Vim's formatting options. If you want to learn more about Vim's formatting options, uh, check out the help pages. Pretty helpful, obviously, as the name implies. And they go over a lot of this sort of stuff. It would be a bit tedious for me to go through all of it. And honestly, remembering it all off the top of my head could be a bit difficult. So there's no point in trying to get you to stuff it all in there as well. Now, the way that Vim was using GQ before was it was just using these default text width and formatting options that I was talking about a second ago. But as I alluded to, it's the second one that we're interested in. We want to be able to change the formatting program. This is how we can actually do our formatting and all of our different program integration that we were hoping to do earlier. 
Now for this example, I'm just going to show you guys how you can set this up to use black, for example, if you're a Python programmer. So basically what I have here is I have a simple if statement, but I've used a tab and this does not comply with PEP8, uh, which I think is the name of the standard for Python programming. Maybe we want to apply the program black, which will format this into tabs. Um, there's alternative ways that you could do this in different tools, but I figured I'd use one that probably Python programmers would want to use. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do set format expr equals, and then we just want to hit enter. So this clears format expr. Um, just in case it was set, this should be done for most other languages when you guys do this. Often format expr is not already set, but it could come in handy to just set it ahead of time so that way you're not having to worry about trying to override it. All right, and so next we're going to set our format prog. So we're going to do set prog equals, and then we're going to do black, and then a dash to say use standard input. And then we actually probably want to do dash q to tell it to be quiet and not print out anything to standard output or standard error, because that will obviously cause an issue. And so we're going to hit enter. And then if I just did gqg, or a capital G, then it will format our text. So pretty simple, GQ, and you guys can basically apply this and use it however you'd like. So now if you were to add this to your VimRC, you'd probably want to follow this format. I added some comments here to kind of explain this, um, but you'd want to check and see if it's executable because obviously you don't want to be executing black on a system that doesn't have it installed. That's not really going to help you. And then you're going to want to set it. Oh, I forgot to do the dash Q. And then you want to make sure that format uh, XPR is not set. And there you go. So you can add this to your FT plugins directory. So if you guys are using Vim, that would be in your home slash dot Vim slash FT plugin slash, and then you do this in Python dot Vim. And then you can do that. And then whatever other um, settings you want for Python. So here I have a bunch of different stuff that I set up for Python files. Um, and then if you're in NeoVim, that would be home slash uh, dot config and then slash nvim and then dot uh, init or no it's init dot nvim now just giving you an example with go we do basically the same thing so we'd want to set this to nothing and then we, instead of setting this to black we would just use equals go fmt and then see here i have these spaces and this is supposed to be tabs so i could just do um, gq ship g and there we go it turns that into a tab pretty simple um, once again, you can use this just like any other operator. So say I did GQIP or uh, GQQ, all that sort of stuff um, can be applied basically the same way as you'd expect. Now, those are just a few examples, and I'm sure there's tons of other code formatters that you guys could be using. So whatever code formatters you guys use, let me know down in the comments what you guys use, how you use it, and if you'd use something like this with it. And if it doesn't work with something like this, let me know. I'd love to know what formatters don't work with Vim's internal tools. So maybe somebody can make a pull request or even post an issue because I feel like something like this is pretty useful. Even if you don't use it in Vim, being able to use standard uh, input like this is quite useful. Now, something you guys will notice is that it will move your cursor. And say, for example, if you wanted to run this on the entire file, um, maybe when you automatically save using auto command or something like that, then you probably would want it to not move your cursor or your window around. And for those of you, I will link down in the description a little gist on GitHub that you guys can use to uh, have this done automatically for you. Now, one last Vim key that I feel like I should probably mention that can come in handy and can be used pretty similarly and has its own advantages, disadvantages, and a bunch of different stuff built in is the uh, exclamation mark key. So if I do exclamation mark shift G, it will give me a little prompt to type in something. So if I just did go FMT, I would get the same sort of experience as if I used it as my formatting prog. So this could be pretty helpful if say, for example, you guys are even using this on VI, because I believe VI has the same sort of thing built in where you could do this and maybe you wanted to do it on a paragraph or something. You do like capital or exclamation point and then curly brace. And then you could just do like, hello, and then that would basically give you an error, but you could do this basically the same way as you'd expect with GoFMT or whatever you'd want to use. On top of that, you can do special things like maybe you wanted to do bang, maybe you want to do grep FMT, and then it would grab the line with FMT in it. I don't know, there's a lot of different things that you guys could do with this, but this is just a really quick example that you guys could mess around with, and it might come in handy
Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Relevant links will be linked down in the description and I'll post some stuff in the pinned comment if I get any cool suggestions or maybe something I missed or other features, I'll be sure to point them out down below. Now, as I alluded to earlier on in the video, there are limitations to this. It does not run asynchronously, so if you automatically have this run every time you save, it could probably slow down your workflow, especially if you're working in a huge file, and that's one of the biggest limitations of this. So in that sort of a case, if you need to be doing this, so say for example, if you were a Go programmer and you wanted to be running GoFMT and the other tools, I believe it has other tools for formatting your includes and stuff like that, then you probably would want to use a plugin that is meant for this. But in a lot of cases, people are usually just using this for small sections of code maybe like most of the time you should be formatting your code properly as you type it you won't want to make it all one line and then use a formatter to make up for it you still want to be programming properly obviously anyways before i cap this off i just want to say thanks to brian shanks who supports me on github sponsors if you guys want to support the channel be sure to check me out on github sponsors or on patreon links down in the description below anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this video and i'd love to see you next time